You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst, Roderick's Path. So, y'all, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> In our church, there are three main jobs that must be done to keep it running. We need people to spread the grace of our goddesses to the less fortunate, and those who are, eh, those are the missionaries. They make sure to do social work and help others. We also need people to protect our precious church from evildoers. The ones that do that are called the Crusaders. Am I right, Sir Roderick? The wolf doesn't respond to Father Flavio. He just remains silent and looks away. And lastly, there are people who make sure to keep the church running from the inside, performing the sacred rites and organizing the resources. The priests such as myself. New lore is now available. So, after hearing all of this, I must tell you that, to some of us who reach a high rank within the church, medals like that are given. But I'm sure the owner of the one you have in your hand will be glad to have it back. It's quite a tragedy to lose your medal. It's a sacred object that signifies your status in this wonderful community. That's nice and all, but we're not giving it to you. No, of course you're not. May you tell me where you found that medal, my son? I took it from my murderer. I say with a dead serious tone and expression, which finally manages to shake the happy expression off his face. I'm done playing around, even if we're, uh, even if we're here on behalf of the king. This man is clearly not taking us seriously, and I'm having none of that. This is awful! But I must assure you, none of the believers would dare to do such a thing. And if you say that the symbol doesn't match, then it must have been someone from outside the church. He does have a point. If the symbol doesn't match, then maybe you're there not... Did we ever mention the symbol not matching? What? Of course you did. Really? Because I don't remember. You didn't? I guess I just assumed. You assumed, huh? Odd thing, isn't it? Why so nervous all of a sudden, Father? He's right. His calm demeanor has changed completely, now he even smells a little sweaty. Is Roderick intimidating him? No, that can't be. Well, you're here accusing our sacred community of a hideous crime. We never accused you of anything, Father. My partner just said he was attacked by the owner of that medal. Roderick turns around and walks towards the entrance, leaving my, me by myself with Father Flavio. Wait a second. What is he doing? We have them right where we want- Why leave now? Let's go, Sir Eli. Seems like our conversation is over. And Father, please look into the possibility of another organization making those fake medals. The King will be expecting a report. That said, he turns the corner and leaves. I decide to follow even when I'm not happy about it at all. Huh. Interesting. <clears throat> what the hell's wrong with you? We had him. He was cracking. We had just had to push a little harder. We could have gotten so much information out of him. Runt, are you ready to face an organization as powerful as the church? A single word from him and that man could have put us in chains, wiped us, and then executed us. What? Wouldn't they get in trouble for doing that? I mean, we're the king's retainers. They would, but before the king could lift a finger to help us, we would be dead. We would be dead already. We'd be accused of some crime and undergo trial in less than a day. No way. So, I'll ask you a serious question. You better answer honestly. Is your will strong enough to keep you fighting until the end? What? Are you ready to face them with all you've got? Because they will destroy you without a second thought. Will you fight? I will! I say without hesitation, my fist clenching, my teeth gritting. I don't care how much he tries to scare me, I would do anything to find her. Even if I have to give my life, I will see my goal accomplished. They will crush you. They've done so to many others and they will do it again. Your tiny life means nothing to them. I don't care. I'm ready to- I'm ready to- I'm ready for anything they throw at me. The wolf sighs and places his arms on his hips, looking at me with an unsure expression. Just as I feared, you're more stupid than you look. His eyes are burning a hole through my skull, and for a moment I fear that he's going to try to stop me, but then he grins. Which means that you might need my help. I will help you uncover the truth behind that medal. But in return, I want you to live your tiny life with your head held high. You are the king's sword and shield, and you will give your life to protect him. Am I clear? Yes, sir! Alright then, let's go back to the inn. We must get ready for the ball. Second y'all, it is water time. Or coffee time, I should say. Oh my god. Oh, my partner really made some incredible coffee this morning. Ah, oh, god, so good. As Roderick says that, he's already turned his back on me walking down the street. The view of his broad back inspires something that I haven't felt in a while, and honestly, I never thought I would feel it again. Hope. 
Better not be it. 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 Motherfucker! Fuck. Okay. All right. So uh, let's read some of the lore then. Okay. So we're gonna save it right here, and we're gonna read some of the lore. So uh, y'all, let me know if there's any other content out for Heart of Amethyst for any of the other paths. I'd like to know so I can continue. But anyway, let's go ahead. Lore. Uh, yeah. Okay. Barbarians, a new nation that was no nation. Okay. Let's... Barbarians, a new nation that was no nation. After defeating the birds and establishing their empire, the canine ruling became more and more strict. The king wished to create a united nation that didn't break like the birds, but to do that he wrongly decided to create a totalitarian regime in which any kind of disobedience would be punished by torture, public humiliation, or death. Oh, Jesus. These are, these are really fucked up torture devices. I've read about these. Jesus. Especially Margot's cradle. Jesus Christ. You, ju you just... Basically, you just sit on it. And it wedges you. It wedges into you. It's horrifying. All of that sparked a sense of discomfort within the population, who in turn decided to leave the kingdom's borders. They sought a safe shelter where the felines once went. The Wastelands. The Wastelands were named as the new oasis by the people of the time. By that time, around the year 500 and 200 prior to Andreas, at least 30% of the canine population decided to leave the land. Amazingly enough, the felines that were already there welcomed the canines with open arms, and together they ended up building strong communities. Not exactly. There were some conflicts, but to make things easier, I'll just pretend that they were, they were best buddies. I don't want to give myself unnecessary headaches. After a few decades of settling, the wasteland became, my, became the home of many multiracial tribes that follow no king and have no rules. True barbarians. The new oasis. Is that what they meant? Second Great War. Around the year 434, prior to Andreas, the birds decided to launch an attack near the canine's border. The canine's northern border. They had less numbers by the time, but at the same time, the birds had made impressive advancements in controlling the different types of crim. And aside from that advantage, they had allied themselves with the felines and some of the barbarian tribes, so the canines found themselves in a tight spot once more. A united front against the canines. One of the greater threats for us canines in the Second War was the fact that the birds had convinced both feline, the felines and the barbarians to join forces with them and against the kingdom. This led to the creation of the United Front, which was created around the year 320 prior to Andreas, and it was dissolved by Andreas himself in the year, in the year zero. Oh, where are we at? Ah! The Second Great War. Oh, okay. Lore. That was never used, but scholars use it for an easier understanding of the events that transpired. This war was even more brutal than the first one, since more nations were involved at the same time. Andreas. To say that Andreas is one of the most important figures in canine history would be an understatement, since he's the most important figure in canine's history. King Andreas I was born in the year 28 prior to Andreas. As most members of the royal family, he was a gray wolf of at least six... At least six one feet, who was raised within Yagnir Castle. He was born when he was at his peak, and he had to take to the throne very early in his life, since his father Adam died died when he was twenty five a twenty five year old man. Like me, coffee time. The king was believed to be a genius ever since he was a kid, and he demonstrated it beyond any doubt when he managed to defeat a group of invading barbarians and birds in a battle that would soon be named the the Clash of the Great Wall. A conflict in which, with only 400 canine men, the king casted away the invading forces and protected a key outpost for the capital of the Empire. The Devil's Gate is a fortress situated between two mountains. It protects the main road and is placed in the, in the middle of the territories within the kingdom. So if you want to travel from north to south and west to east, you must go through this fort or try your luck going through the Deadly Mountains. The Clash of the Great Wall is not the only reason why Andreas is so important. After many years of repelling the United Front troops, Andreas managed to befriend the barbarian leader, Illusur, convincing him to lay down their weapons. Also, he signed a peace treaty with the Cats, agreeing to keep Dakota Islands as neutral ground and allow a trading line with our ports, keeping them open at all times, something that previous kings refused to do. Eventually, the birds were forced to sign a no-conflict agreement. All those impeccable accomplishments granted him the title of King, the title of King, of Andreas the Immortal King. The Apostle? Something, something my mom kept repeating was the existence of an Apostle who helped bring peace to this land, I, for a long time, believed in what she said. After all, what reason could my mom possibly have to lie? It wouldn't make sense, right? Well, lately I found myself doubting the mere existence of this historical figure. According to my mom, the Apostle was a man with perfect balance within him, a person capable of doing miracles who helped Andrea stop the war. It all sounds great, but no matter how hard I look, I look, not a single book mentions the existence of such a man. 
Who is he? Is, is it really all just made up? Why is there no information about him aside from what my mom has told me? Birds surrender again. Birds have no one but themselves to blame for the loss of the Second Great War. First, they didn't properly treat their barbarian allies with the respect they deserved, as they mistreated them and even got Illyser's bar the barbarian chief lover killed. Their relation with the felines wasn't the best as well. Birds had promised a great deal of riches and power, but so far, after 400 years of war, they'd only managed to conquer 20% of the Canine Kingdom. Eventually, the birds found themselves without allies and without options, forcing them to retreat back to their peninsula. Illyser's New Nation after the events of the Second Great War, the barbarian Illyser decided to make the Wastelands an independent nation. That's how, with King Andreas' support, who was his friend, the Wastelands became the land of Illyser's tribes, also known as the Tribes of the Sun. The River of Bones is the third great river in the middle of the continent, and a landmark which scholars use to separate Illyser's islands. After the separation, there has been a few issues near the border, and sometimes the Church has tried to convert the citizens of the Wastelands into believers, which has ignited a bunch of new conflicts named as the Holy Crusaders. But despite all of that, the Crown has always been respectful of the tribes and their customs. The Church Once the war was over, one of King Andreas' closest friends decided to found a new institution to worship the three goddesses. I believe that had always been there, but it had never been properly venerated. The name of this man was Snyder. Was Cinder, sorry. Cinder was one of the King's advisors during the times of the Second Great War, who dedicated his life to help the ones in need, and to accomplish that, he created the Holy Church of Balance. At first, the Church started as just a mere temple in which the goddesses were praised. But their influence began to grow rapidly as more and more people decided to believe in the myth of the three goddesses. The placement of his first temple was near the White River. This great body of water is situated in, Col in Columnia, and it has turned into a worshipping ground for believers. Eventually, after 60 years, more than 8% of the population became believers. It probably had something to do with Andreas' support of his friend. <sighs> after Cinder's death, the year, the year 71 after Andreas, the church decided... The church's direction was passed down to one of its closest acolytes, Ramus. Ramus was, was a blind acolyte who claimed that the goddesses took away his sight, so they could talk directly to him. That's why, reciting such a bold claim, he wrote a 500-page book in which all the teachings and rules of the goddesses were specified. This book became a staple that any good citizen should follow to reach the realm of the gods after they die. The Sanctus Liber, or just the holy book if you don't want to be sound fancy. Alright y'all, I'm gonna pause it right there, that's enough lore for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.